The Uniqueness of Pokemon Pokemon captures you by immersing you in its world, and today I'd like to discuss how. For example, have you ever thought about how every person who plays Pokemon will have their own unique team? Think about it. Most people will use a different set of Pokemon in general, but then it gets even deeper. Moves, stats, natures, and most importantly, what the Pokemon means to the player weighs in tremendously as well. You know that battle you had where your Pokemon just barely held on and you won the battle even though you were sure you were going to lose, or that time you absolutely wiped the other team because of a strategy? strategy you came up with. All of that is embodied in someone's save file of a single Pokemon game, and when you look at it as a whole, everyone's is different. I'm going to split this video into a few parts. 1. The team. 2. The regions. 3. The story. And 4. The climax. And cover how they have built an amazing formula to keep players wanting more and more of the franchise. 1. Your unique team. When you start up a Pokemon game, you are immediately introduced to the professor who shows you a Pokemon. And in the case of Scarlet and Violet, the cutscene in the beginning introduces a whole lot more. Immediately, you are hooked and you want to see what other Pokemon lurk in the grasses. You are then given a choice of three starters, usually being a very difficult choice for many players, as this will be the one who accompanies you along your journey. This is the first branching off for many players. While there's normally a fan favorite, I find that most casual fans have their own preferences over them. Certain players even go for choosing a single type for every playthrough, such as always picking the grass starter, creating a one-of-a-kind experience. This transcends one single playthrough, extending to multiple that adds another layer of individuality to them. But let's say you don't want a classic starter, so you box it and either catch another Pokemon that you like or transfer one in. I don't think I have to tell you that this starts opening the pass in too many ways that if I were to spend time on all of them, this video would get too long, so let's keep this video a bit more simple. A few examples of branching off though include transferring one or two Pokemon for your team, transferring in an entire new team, or three, Boxing your starter and building a team fully based on catching the Pokemon you want without your starter, except the first one obviously. But let's say you keep your starter and head on in your adventure. You are then given the choice of your classic early route Pokemon. You know, the early rodents, birds, bugs, etc. After that, you continue on with your adventure and then you are given a choice of, I don't know, hundreds of varieties of Pokemon? The ones you find are also very different than everyone else's, and who knows, you may even find a shiny along the way. Your Pokemon's natures and EVs will also be unique to it, and they may even carry a ribbon. I'm not even going to go into detail with many of these things, yet the options continue growing and growing. And so by the time you finish the game, your team and your friend's team look completely different. Now you may be wondering why I've been talking about the uniqueness and individuality of your Pokemon game so far. This is because with many other games, there isn't much uniqueness to people's playthroughs, and the, all the individuality that comes along with it is really dependent on the decision the players make throughout the game. And with Pokemon, I don't even want to start with it. Pokemon and the moves and the battles. In short, you have your own experience, which brings you much closer to the game, making you much more fond of it, and it helps build in your mind the world of Pokemon even more. This leads one to want to play other Pokemon games and even adds replayability due to the variety of ways you can play. Two. The region. So I want to slightly touch on the topic of Pokemon's world building and its region. The environment it takes place in tells a big story after all, and it helps immerse players and keeps them eager to discover the secrets that may lie in the region. If Pokemon was just a battle simulator, you wouldn't be engaged now, would you? Perhaps it would have gained the following, but nothing that would make it as big as it is today. The region tells you what the game is even about, without telling you. You now want to explore these lands that intrigue curiosity and exploration, and most importantly, you want to do it with your Pokemon. If the region were poorly constructed or not interesting and did not tell the stories it did, it would have not created the massive boom that Pokemon had experienced. This can also be seen the most in Scarlet and Violet, the first open world Pokemon game, allowing you to explore to your heart's content wherever and however you'd like. It truly brought this point home, especially with the feeling from the beginning of the game that there is something lurking in the deepest parts of the region, due to, due to the intrusive crater covering a major span of the map. It creates an air of intrigue and a sense of anticipation, as it's obvious the game is building towards you getting to explore that part of the region. Without Paldea, would Scarlet and Violet really have been fun to play? And further exemplified by, if not for Area Zero, would there have been as much curiosity to continue adventuring every corner of the map? Perhaps there would have been, but it wouldn't have stemmed from good game design. It would have likely come from a prior built love of the series that we have already established. It wouldn't have happened if not for those regions themselves. 3. 
I'll use plot and story interchangeably, by the way. Now, up until Scarlet and Violet, people have considered Pokemon to have had pretty lackluster stories. However, I disagree. Pokemon has never had its focus on the story, but it has always played an integral role to its success. In Kanto, on the surface, it didn't really have a story. It had some underlying narratives, such as the one with Mewtwo, but it lacked a clear and concise plot. And I believe this to be the intertwining of the numerous aspects of the game. It's not one sole story, it's a collection dispersed throughout. For example, you can view the gym battles as one story, and it is aka the main story of most Pokemon games, which is basically your adventure. The point is that, for example, Kanto looks to be very simple with no proper story, but in my opinion, it's full of it. Take the invasion of Team Rocket at Silph Co. It's a fun part of the game, but what do you define it with? A part of its gameplay? A part of team building? A random side activity? What is its purpose? This can be seen as a quest, but I think quests are inherently a part of an overarching story, normally used for world building, providing intrigue for the player as earlier explained. And while it utilizes that, I believe it is also part of the story, and what is most commonly believed to be the story amongst fans, and that is the evil team story, an opposing force that you must battle against and defeat. This allows you, the player, to stand up for this region, the people, and makes you care for your adventure, and this world begins to mean a lot more to you. It was a long-winded road to get here, but I wanted to explain why even if the story looks plain, it doesn't mean it's just filler. It connects with so many parts of your adventure that all comes to create your experience with the game. Four, Climax. So I've discussed the variety of ways Pokemon catches you, and now I want to discuss how that all comes together for your climactic journey. or leading the charge with your team, something unique to only you, journeying in a vast region, that intrigues you, battling against an evil team, that empowers you. These three points are of a much bigger foundation, but they were the three that I wanted to focus on. And in fact, all of these points I mentioned can be explored in significantly different ways, but I don't want to get off topic. In any case, your journey made up of these three cores is what engages you and keeps you coming back. Pokemon may look like a franchise that just uses the same formula over and over, and I agree. It just, I don't agree with the sentiment that normally comes attached with it. Generally, people say it as a negative, but I see it as a positive. When making the next game, they look at the previous ones and try to find what made them work, and then bring forwards what they think will work again into the next and then improve it, which will make the games even more engaging and fun for fans and new players all the life. The stories of Pokemon have evolved, the regions have gotten more deeper, and the Pokemon themselves have grown in number. With all these aspects, you slowly but surely take your unique team to explore the last part of the region and complete the story, normally with the legendary Pokemon that has been foreshadowed since the very beginning of the game. It creates an engaging experience for the player during this one playthrough, and then afterwards, they naturally want to come back for more. Thank you guys so much for watching. This video is different than my usual ones, which are normally pretty rambly, and I originally planned on this being no different, stemming from a rush of excitement about how wonderfully made the franchise is, and I decided that this type of format would be the most appropriate. I definitely could have delved into the topics in more detail and covered even more, and I'm not sure if I did the best job at conveying my message, but I tried and that's what counts. I wrote this pretty quickly, but I think it'll help lay a good foundation for future analytical videos that I may want to hopefully cover one day. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful day.